Come on, come on, come on. Your hands, your voice, everything. Bless the Lord. Shout to him. Clap your hands. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, our Father. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And God's people said a big A. Lift your hands to heaven. Isaiah 58, verse 58. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine hell shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Father, let the returns of the 21 day fast break forth upon me. Lift your voice, Father. Let my light break forth as a result of this 21 day fast. Let the glory of the Lord manifest. Let my star shine. Let my glory break forth. Let the blessings of fasting return to me in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Father, thank you for the grace to fast. Thank you for the grace to pray. Thank you for calling us to that fast. We believe you that you have heard us. We believe that you are God who answers prayer. And we trust you that the returns of the fast will come to us. Thank you for strength to fast. Thank you for the grace to supplicate, seek your face. Thank you for everyone who joined us all over America and the world. We give you praise that we will break forth and we will break through in the name of Jesus. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your light, let your glory break forth in the favor of this, your child, in the name of Jesus. Pray now, Father, let your light, let your grace break forth in the life of this, your child I'm holding. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Say amen. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 27. Lamentations 3:27. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Media, it is good that you serve the Lord in your youth. Come unto me, all you that labor. It is good that God calls you early and you serve him now that you're strong enough. Father, throughout this year, let my service for you and to you be anointed and blessed of you. I will not serve you in vain. Lift your voice. Father, I am serving you. Let the returns, let the blessings of serving you in my youth break forth now. I will not serve you in vain this year. Now lift your voice, talk to him. I will not serve you in vain. I will serve you with everything. Give me the grace to serve you all the days of this year and the days of my life. I will serve you gladly. You will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and bless your drink, bless your food. And no, he takes sickness away from you. Father, give me the strength to serve you throughout this year. In the mighty name of Jesus and God's people said a big amen. Give the Lord a big clap. Of and then you may be seated. Tell your neighbor, hello, how are you? Tell them I look better than you. Amen. I welcome all of you to this glorious service. This is a service of victory. 
If the weather couldn't keep you, nobody will keep you. Today is somebody's day of encounter with the Lord. Who is that person? You're, I will find out in a moment by the way you respond to God's word this morning. Say amen to that. Amen. This is what the Lord spoke to me. Please write this down. Prayer cures laziness. Prayer cures laziness. Prayer cures laziness. If you're lazy in prayer, pray to be cured of prayer laziness. If you're heavy in life, feeling heavy, feeling down, prayer cures heaviness. Prayer cures heaviness. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm discouraged. Uh, every, nothing is going my way. I, I don't know what to do with my life. Pray. Prayer kills and cures heaviness. Prayer kills and cures depression. Oh, I, I, Pastor, you don't know. I'm so overwhelmed. It's just trouble. Everything just not going my way. Pray. Prayer cures confusion. Prayer cures. Pastor, I don't know what to do. I have four men looking for me. They all want to marry me. Prayer cures confusion. Mm, amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Prayer cures confusion. I don't know which way should to go. Prayer cures confusion. Prayer is not just give me money, give me. No. Prayer clears your mind. You wake up, you ah, Pastor, I had 50 dreams. I saw them. Oh, Pastor, my mind. And I saw them. Let, let, I saw somebody and then in a coffin. No, no, no. Tell the devil that coffin is yours. You are going into that coffin. Come on now. Should we have church this morning? I declare over somebody, you said today is your day, right? Any coffin, any trap, any pit dug for you this year, those who dug it will enter into it right now. I, think, I say right now, right now, right now. In your office, on the job, in your father's house, mother's house. Uh, are we in Atlanta or are we in Glory House? They will go into it. In the, and none of our children shall fall into the hands of the enemy. Say amen now. So when they come up against you this year with all that funny story, tell them, listen, it's not me you saw. You better be careful. Maybe you saw yourself. Stop them right there. And say, I'm too blessed to die before my time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I just, just, prayer cures lack. Prayer cures lack. Ah, Pastor, I just don't know how things are going. Pray. Prayer cures lack. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. amen. I promised that I would teach you. Uh, and then let me just give you this right away quickly. The, the blessings of obedience. That's just one part of my message, but I promise. Uh, the blessings of obedience. James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Did you see that? Submit. Surrender. Obey God first. Then you can bind the devil, resist the devil, attack the devil, go after the devil, then he would flee. One of us was testifying this morning, and God dealt with my heart. It is in the heart that a man is determined. Your destiny is formed in your heart. As a, as a man thinketh in his heart, 
so is he. You change your thinking, you change your mind, you change your results. We just ended a 21-day fast. Anything you do for 21 days becomes a part of your life. So do not forsake fasting and say, thank God we're free. Let it be a part of your life. Praise is a part of our lives. Thanksgiving, part of our lives. Fasting, I know I won't get any amen to that. Let it be a part of our lives. Oh, giving, not just giving in church and giving, you know, the, the tithes and offerings and first fruits. No, giving to the poor. Amen. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Mm, is this not the father that I've called? And then that you will reach out to the poor. So submission, we were taught, was just to say, Father, I submit to you. No, submit to God. Submit to authority. Submit to your parents. The Bible didn't say like your parents. He said obey your parents. I don't like my mom. Yeah, I don't like my dad. Yeah, I don't like the way she treated my mom and the way my mom treated my dad. That's not for you to judge. You were not there. Hey, well, Pastor, you just don't know. My dad was crazy. and Yeah, but you're still carrying his DNA. Honor him. Honor doesn't mean like him. Honor him. Show him high regard. Remember, pray for them. Reach out to them. Say amen to that. Amen. Obedience, submission. 1 Samuel 15, 22. 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Obeying. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes, to obey, I said it last Sunday, to obey is better than prayer. To obey is better than praise and worship. To obey is better than tithing and offering. To obey is better than interceding, laying on your face all night, all day, every day. To obey. Obedience. Write this down. Every act of obedience is a seed. Every act of obedience is a seed. Parents, you know how you feel when you give your child an instruction, I don't care how small they are, and they disobey. Right, mother? Do you like it? No. Go get me that. Day. No. Do your homework. No. Get up. No. Do you kiss them and say, thank you for disobeying me? Obedience is a seed for a future reward. Amen, Amen now. Amen. Number two, obedience brings prosperity. Proverb uh, Job 36, verse 11. Obedience brings prosperity. Sometimes we're struggling because we're out of order. If they obey, Job 36 verse 11, if they obey and serve him, obey and serve. Well, I, I will only serve, I will just serve in, in this department and that's it. I, I, I'm not going to do nothing else. I just, I'm just this, and that's all. Anybody else, please leave me alone. I'm, my job is just to do this in the church, and I'm good to go. Let pastor find somebody else. I'm not the only one in this church. You just voided your seed. If they obey and serve him, then they shall spend their days in prosperity Amen. and their years in pleasure. Is it not Exodus 23, 25 or 25, 23? You shall serve the Lord 
thy God, and then he will bless your bread and your water and take sickness from you. Mm -hmm. So that's 23, 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. How can you serve the person you don't obey? Then, so all this praying and fasting, thank God for praying and fasting. The person who obeys has more success and more impact in the kingdom of God than he who is doing a 40-day fast just out of order. Number three, obedience brings you protection. Obedience brings you protection. Exodus 23, 22. It's not a shouting message for now. Maybe you will shout later. Exodus 23, 22. And if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then, as a result, consequentially, I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. Remember the scripture we started? It's good for a young man to bear his yoke in his youth. If I wasn't called early, if I didn't, if I didn't, if I wasn't dragged into ministry early, I would have remained a businessman. God knows where I would have been, how many houses, how many wives, how many children, how many mansions, how are all kinds of monies, how many jets, but flying to hell. Because that was my plan. Make money have houses in 50 cities in the world. And I was on the way. I made my first million 1994. Not 2004, 94. I bought my first Mercedes 94 or 93. Cash, Benz. No wife, nothing, no plan, just fooling around. Put $20,000 in the back of my pocket and just driving around. You can imagine, even if I did nothing, that was my plan. Put up that Lamentations verse because I want to burn it down in somebody's spirit. But God said, uh-uh, this way you're off. A young boy, Mercedes-Benz. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Now that you have strength. Now that you're under 40. Now you're under 60. What are you doing for God? Now. While you have strength. You can drive yourself. You can talk by yourself. You can pray. You can use some parts of your body are still attractive to some people. I will keep it at that. Use that for ministry. That you carry your yoke now. Man, I will only just be in the worship team. If Sister Sandra doesn't like it, then I will just sit. I must sing, lead the worship every Sunday. If it's not that, well, let her just go. I'm just, when I sing like this, devil runs, devils run away. No. Start with washing the toilets in church. You heard the testimony. Oh, one of us, his parents had a set of, where is he? Set of twins, first set of twins, dead. Second set of twins, dead. Then the woman got pregnant again, right? With you. With somebody else. Another boy. And he lived. Huh? For seven weeks. And he died too. Uh -huh. In her youth. 
So her eggs were working, her tubes were working, her ovaries were working, but a spirit, five children, and then one of your brothers showed up. You that showed up. Uh-huh. But she, she, her mother, his mother discovers something. I better go and serve in the church. Amen. And sweep. Crying, but sweeping. Yes. Miscarrying, but sweeping the church. You think you're suffering, you're going through stuff, and then you hear the story of other people. I don't know as a pastor if I could handle five babies gone. And then I'm sweeping the house of the God who I would assume should see my condition and rescue me and do something about it and show my enemies that he's God. And sometimes God is silent when we're looking and we're wondering why on earth is this happening? But God, I fast, I pray, I sow seed, I serve you. That is why God is God all by himself. They sang it this morning. Because sometimes we just are like, what in the world? Maybe I was stuck, and I've heard one or two, where well, uh, somebody said, where I was God, and I was serving him. How could God do this to me? Why not you? He doesn't need your vote to be God. Where was God when my father died? Where was God when my brother died? Where was God when my sister died? Cool in heaven. Still chilling in heaven. Mm -hmm. Still God. So why can't, why couldn't, no, he's still God. Some of the things of life that we can understand are just, we can understand them. Don't try to provide answers when somebody's asking you questions. Pastor, why? I don't know. Honey, I don't know. But one thing I know, if God is God, at the end of this thing, we will have a reason to give God praise. That's all. There are many things I don't understand about God. Amen. Am I helping anybody? this? Because sometimes we're like, but I fasted for 21 days. And pastor said that after we fast, we'll just see the glory of the Lord. The glory, the glory. Where is the glory? After I fasted, everything went worse. Honey, it is after the fast and the praying, then God responds. After you finish talking to him, then you keep quiet, then he begins to respond. Well, so pastor, how do I keep quiet? Number one, you're praising. Father, I thank you that you heard me. You're giving him glory. Father, I give you glory that you're working on it. Am I helping anybody? Keep your praise on. Keep your joy on. Let it, though the harvest does not come forth, the pro- prophet was saying, yet will I joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. Keep your talk on. Uh, but you fasted. Has the husband come? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Has the baby come? Oh, yes. The baby was released. On Saturday, January 26th. But I don't see anything. Oh, honey, you need to go check your eyes. Yeah, but uh, so when is your wedding day? You'll be notified. I, it was done on 26th of January 2019. That was the day I got married. I settled it. So, but where is the man? He's on his way. So when are we going to meet him? Soon. So, so do you have the job? Oh, yeah. I got hired January 26, 2019. I got the job. I got the job. I said, uh, I'm, I'm prophesying and talking. On you. I said, I got the job. So where is it? Uh, wait now. It's, it's done. So where are you working? 
I'm working. Amen. Don't talk trash anymore. Amen. Well, I don't know, you know. So, do you have a new car? Yes. When did you buy it? January 26, 2019. Amen. Oh, you've come again with this Christian talk. No, this is not Christian talk. I know that it is done. Oh, you haven't seen the car yet? Oh, I'm using new burner because my car is special delivery. It's on its way. It's special delivery. It's special delivery. It's, 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 special. it's from out of state. They, they're bringing it in. I have a friend like that. One day he woke up. He was so blessed. Yeah, yeah. He just said, um, I just want to buy a new car to just buy myself a gift. He called Miserati. I said, I want a brand new Miserati, zero miles. Put it on a truck. Drop it in front of my house, zero miles. $200,000. He paid cash. Nigerian like you. For those who are Nigerian. African like you. Black like you, for those who are black. Christian like you, for those who are white watching me. See, there's something that ties all of us, black, Jewish, Greek, Orthodox, unorthodox, First Baptist, Second Baptist, Last Baptist, all. We're tied together, one God, one destiny, one word, the word of God, one faith. Hallelujah. So when is your company? When did your company ask you to register? Some people took it seriously. They registered for their companies. They brought the papers. I laid hands on them. So uh, how is your business? Oh, flourishing. Any clients? Yes. Who's your first client? <laughs> the king of kings, the lord of lords. Jesus, the son of God. If you don't take up something in his house to be doing, what authority have you given him to take up something in your company to be doing? Now I know why God caused me to bear my yoke in my youth. So while I'm working for him, he's working for me. I'm clean. The, one of the, if I, if honestly, the, one of the best jobs to do in the church is to clean. As you're cleaning, many of them, I remember when she used to clean the whole church, my office, everybody would just be gone. She would close the doors. See, when you hear testimonies, find out the tests behind the testimonies. We just hear the money. We don't want to hear about the test. She will clean and clean and clean and vac all by herself. And I will come. God will reward you. God, yeah, amen. And I say, as you're cleaning his house, God will clean your father's house. And she kept doing it. She went to sing somewhere. There's something just entered the one boy's. He got confused. He went away six months again. He came again. He met like, ah, what type of thing is coincidence? No, it's marriage incident. Marriage incident. Wife incident. Before you know it, I did the wedding. Twins followed. Things are happening. It started with cleaning. A pharmacist, not on the job, the uh, people like us who didn't read well, very well. A pharmacist cleaning the church by herself, sweeping this small sanctuary, cleaning it, vacuuming, cleans men's toilet, women's bathroom, they call it. I call it toilet so you know how low it is. And God. If I wasn't your, honest, if I had the time, nobody, I just love cleaning. In my house, I wash the toilets. Pastor, oh my God, anointing. No, it's in the cleaning. I clean toilets, I vacuum. What I don't do is carry trash to the road. That one, mm. <laughs> that one, I know. driving this car. To the road, no. Clean, yes. Vacuum, yes. All the toilets, I wash. Vacuum, yes. I love it. Because as I'm vacuum, 
The boys learned it. They bought them two fake vacuum cleaners. Because they saw their father cleaning. So now, when I'm cleaning, their own, every vacuum, we have, they are, wee, wee, wee. some are picking up nothing, some are picking up everything. <laughs> Why? The spirit of servanthood, they caught it immediately. Say amen. amen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Am I, am I helping somebody? Yes. Ah, say yes. Automatic answers to prayers from obedience. When you obey, you don't need to ask. Seek ye first, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom. All things, all these things shall be added. Seek ye first. Obey him first. This is a God first church. God first in the morning. God first in the week. God first in the year. I'm coming to that. Amen. Then all these things shall be added. Not prayed for, added. Hallelujah. I will never go to a church. Well, too late. Every time any church I was a member of, I would serve. What can be done? What can, worst case, I'll go in front and be greeting people. Welcome to church today. You're going to have a miracle. Why? The sick, may God open your understanding to the power of service. Serving with joy, not serving and complaining. I don't care if you're a musician or in the choir, usher, media. You're serving in children's church. You're grumbling. Folks, you're cooking in your house for your husband or your wife. You're grumbling. This is the last time. I don't know if this man thinks I'm his slave. Yes, you are a slave to God. Eh, he, he, he doesn't even appreciate. Honestly, let God appreciate me. I, when God appreciates you, he causes men to bow before you. Isn't that good? Let God pay. Well, I won't help anybody anymore. They all use me and dump me. Look at me. Look at me. Use me very well. Use me as your pastor. Use me well. So that God can pay me well, well. Shaka balabala. God rewards those he uses. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Use me. Yes, he, he will pay you rent for using you. Has, have you lacked anything? He sent them out to, did you lack anything? No. Go not with purse or script. Did you lack anything? No. No. Have you missed anything? No. Some of you, your children's destiny is tied to your service. <laughs> That's how I pray. Some of them, they come, hey, Pastor, I say, this is your child. This is what they are doing for you. Father, move now. Are you listening? One of us had a bleeding in his brain. Huh? I went there, was it not two years ago? Father, this man served me when we went to Jamaica, I didn't know he could serve like that. And I'm going to Jamaica again. I don't know when, but I need him there. He can't die. The next day, they sent him home. Somebody bleeded in his brain. Glory be. Am I helping anybody this morning? Well, I, I just, I, 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 don't say, I, I just don't like the way they treat me. I, I want to usher, but pastor, I just that I don't like somebody to tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. So I'm talking to somebody to make up your mind that this year 
you will serve the Lord. Serve him, witness, tell people. That's why we gave you the rich man to start a conversation. He's a conversation starter. Some of you have six on one arm. Wonderful. I like it. So that you can get attention. What in the world is all this you're wearing on your wrist? I see three. On Laura, Laura. How many you got, Laura? Two. Who has six? I saw somebody with six. They're hiding. You almost finished the armbands. Use them. If you want to wear on your on your ankle, wear them. So when you're swimming, soon weather is going to change soon. It will be your life life uh, thing. Uh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Obedience. Am I helping anybody? Like I said last Sunday, Abraham didn't need to pray. Abraham, Genesis 12, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Come out of thy father's house. Let, let's look at him and go to a place I'll show you. He never said, uh, show me a sign. God, is this you? No. He just packed up and left. Go, put it, media, are you there? Go to a place, Abraham, where, is, where are the media people? Come on now. Genesis 12. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country. Leave Nigeria. Leave Jamaica. Where is it to come from? Guyana. She comes from Ghana, she comes from England, she comes from Nigeria, she comes from USA. All in one woman. And some men are stupid. They can't marry. If I, you move quickly, this woman is four, four countries in one. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what is wrong with this man? Pay me or later, you know. <laughs> Get out of your country. There's some of us countries... Me, I have two. She has four. But come out anyway. From your kindred. From your father's house. Unto a land I will show thee. Next verse. And I will make of thee. Next verse. And I will bless thee. Next verse. And Abraham departed. No prayer. No fleecing God. Father, if it's you, let four camels come into my bedroom right now. No. Just go. Just go. Nike is a Jewish company. They caught a revelation. Just do it. It's a Jewish company, in case you don't know. No wonder God is blessing them. And, well, I'm not Jewish. Galatians 3.29. You are a spiritual Jew. So, as Abraham departed, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are a child of Abraham spiritually. So, Abraham's blessings are mine. It's a right song to sing. And finally, no, there's one more. Miracles follow those who obey. Miracles follow those who obey. Genesis 26, there was famine, there was scarcity, there was trouble, there was unemployment, there was immigration issues, and Abraham left. Uh, Isaac started going. And Isaac, there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Next verse. And God said to him, do not go to Egypt. Dwell in this land. Which land? There's trouble here. There's affliction here. Stay here. And he obeyed. Next verse. And not only that. He says, sojourn, and I will bless thee and all that stuff. And then I will, I will perform the covenant. I will bless you because of your father. And then his breakthrough came. He sowed in that land and things began to happen. 
he did not pray. See, that's, I want to get it so strong in your spirit. It is when we don't obey, then we start to struggle. Obedience gives you automatic miracles. Glory be to God. And finally, obedience brings you, makes you intimate with God. Intimacy with God. Intimacy with God. You become intimate. Jeremiah 33, verse 33. Jeremiah 33, verse 33. Call upon the Lord, and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Hallelujah. You can't call him. Somebody say, well, God is my body. I say, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, God is my body, uh-huh. God is my body, uh-huh. God is my body, uh-huh. I am with him, he's with me. Uh huh. Are you in obedience? Mm -mm. Are you in submission? Mm -mm. Are you a tither? I don't know about it. Are you a first fruiter? I reject it. Do you give offerings? I bind the devil. Do you live pure? I reject it. Do you come early to church? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm spiritual. Do you serve in the church? What in the world is wrong with you? Do I look like a slave? Can't you see how long my nails are? You think these nails are for washing somebody's, this thing, in, in a public church toilet? Who do you think I am? A slave? Don't you know I live in Nostrum and I have lunch at Nima Marcus? For all you know, they don't sell food there. Sorry, he just he just out of order. But we don't know. Now let me talk you to talk to you to the se second thing. This is part two of my message today, and I'll soon drop the mic. Let's talk about a covenant assisted life, a life powered by covenants. Am I helping anybody? God will not relate to anybody except on the basis of a covenant. What is a covenant? A contract. Marriage is a contract. Forget about, oh, uh, I will kiss you. I will kiss you every day. I will kiss you for the rest of my life. You will kiss until the bills come. Rent, car, money, grocery, food. Then children come. You start buying children's clothes. Before you say Jesus was born, and uh, was born and he resurrected, they've outgrown the clothes. Oh, pastor, there's this lady. When I see her, I lose my composure and my equi equi equilibrium. Honey, you will lose it until you lose your money. Everything costs money in a woman's body. Marriage is a wake-up call. Ah, I didn't know, Pastor. One came with the other. How, how is married life? He said, it's good, 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 good. I said, you mean very good, good. Once they say good, you know that uh, the heat is on. How is life? Good. How is work? Good. It's a lie. Pentecostal lie. How is America treating you? Good. It's a lie. Oh. There's sweating somewhere. How, how is uh, this uh, marriage market working? Any, any, good. It's a lie. How good is it? Uh, Pastor, I need to see you in your office. Uh, but you say good. Covenant assisted life. In America, no marriage is recognized without a contract. You can never buy a cell phone, set it up for yourself. Which phone company are you in covenant with that you will rent their facility for a fee? Covenant. Why is God relating with us? Because of 
our covenant with his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the basis and the platform of our covenant with God. I don't care who you are, except you have a covenant with a mother, you cannot come into the earth. Women are gateways for babies to come into this world. Whether you like her or not, that's how God, or only one came in, even the only one, he still went through a woman called Mary. And all that stuff they are doing in New York and some of the states that you can remove a baby from a woman's womb even in the ninth month. The devil is a liar. Let confusion strike them. Let repentance grab them in New York and every other state that wants to blood, bleed a blood, blood covenant with the devil over America. We reject it. We neutralize it in the name of Jesus. Come on, let me hear the body of Christ. America belongs to God. God will have America. God's covenant with America, with the forefathers and the founding fathers of America shall stand. Not in our days. Until Jesus comes, America will serve God. No blood shall be shed in worship with Satan and Molech in the name of Jesus. If he has to remove some, remove them. If you have to bring down some, bring down. If you have to, come on now, are we in church? If he has to replace some, replace them. It's just too bad that there is a people in God who believe in the sanctity of life. And that every baby in the womb from the first breath of conception, first heartbeat, is a human being. And the blood of Jesus will stop them. All these murderers in government, God will arrest them. Shout him into that. Hallelujah. The covenant assisted life. He keeps covenants. He has a promise. We did all those 40 covenants last Sunday. Why? Covenants power people. In Africa, you go to a juju priest. You make a covenant. Why do you go there? So his altar can power you. Huh? You go to a psychic, you go to a palm reader, you go to a stargazer. What are you looking for? That his altar will power you. So every covenant has a, an altar. Write it down. Every covenant has an altar and every covenant has a priest governing it. Our covenant is with the father by the blood of Jesus, our high priest. And every covenant has blood powering it. I don't care how broke you are. You go to a native doctor or OBM man or juju man, they will ask you for a chicken at least. Even if you ain't got it, they, they, they will, you must give something in order to connect with that covenant. And connect with that altar. And connect with that priest. And then you go for the job interview. Or like some of you did. You now go for the visa interview. And you show up smiling. And they think they are talking to a human being. They don't know that there's a juju priest. A juju altar. A juju covenant powering you. Why? Right, is down. Every covenant is for advantages. So you can have a cutting edge and have an advantage over other people. Am I making, is that clear? So, so you don't go, you know, to church just to go. No, you're going to the most high altar, to the most high priest, to the most high blood, to the most high covenant, 
to the most high oath, to the most high power, so that when you come to church, you come to renew strength, and when you show up on the job on Monday, there's a power behind you. You are not alone. Come on, God is powering you because of your covenant with him caught in the blood of Jesus when you gave your life to Christ. So when you come to church, you come to renew covenant and to power it with your worship and your thanksgiving and your tithe and your offering and your seed and your rejoicing and your clapping and your shouting to set more fire on the altar because the fire on the altar must never be put out. So when from Monday to Saturday you go there and they think you're ordinary, they wouldn't know that you have an advantage over them. Am I helping you? So, so we don't come to church because we, we, it's cold and you're watching me when you should be here just because we ain't got nothing to do. No, we come to renew strength. They go from strength to strength. So that's why it's called a service. So they can change your water, change your oil, top up your tires, rotate the tires, pull out some nails you picked up during the week, pump the tire again, put brand new tires, Put some water in your windscreen, something. Check the windscreen, check the headlamps, check everything. Make sure the trunk is working. Get, make sure your Bluetooth is get somebody call. Hello, I'm driving right now, but I can talk to you. I'm on Bluetooth. Yeah. And then you, you're on power steering. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And then at the traffic light, you're listening to music, talking on the phone, fixing your hair till you hear pam pam. Oh, it has changed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's hot. You just press a button and the weather is, and you see some of you is heated. And you're like, thank you, Jesus. Why? It's because of your covenant with the car dealership. So when you break the covenant, they just show up. And you wouldn't know that when they sold the car to you, they kept a spare key. God forbid. Say amen three times. I'm going to teach you all of that. David covenant. David covenant. So look at me. So when David came against Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, you know what he would say? He said, you uncircumcised Philistine. You know what he was saying? Don't you know I'm in covenant with Yahweh God, the God of Abraham? It was a covenant talk. Because God said to them, a sign of my covenant with you is that all men should be circumcised. She said, you uncircumcised Philistine. He was talking sexual talk. He said, manhood to manhood, you're an animal. And me, I'm, God. I'm, I'm not an I'm, I will kill you. Covenant talk. Man to man. This is deep talk. There's sex in the Bible. Though. Even in warfare, there's sexuality. He said, you are an uncircumcised man. I am in covenant with Jehovah God, who has never lost a battle. I will cut your head down. You can't let somebody push you around in the office yes, and just treat you anyhow. Listen, let me give you the best part of it. A covenant-assisted life cannot be terminated easily, ever. No. A covenant-assisted life cannot be terminated. A covenant-assisted business cannot be terminated. A covenant-assisted life cannot become a homeless. No. There are certain dreams you must not respond to anymore. No. I am powered by my covenant. I'm a covenant practitioner. Am I helping somebody? Because things will come up and you say, uh-uh, devil, I went for service yesterday. And I got... Sometimes, don't pray. Look at me. 
Don't pray. Talk to the devil. This prayer, God. <laughs> no, no. One day I got so mad, I just said, Devil, sit down. Let's have a talk. I want to remind you that I'm a covenant son of God. That's number one. Number two, I'm a covenant practitioner. Number three, I serve God. Number four, with joy I serve God. Number five, you are out of order to harass me, bring these terrible dreams, crawl all over my roof, and all these things to intimidate me, bring aches into my body, pain, mess with my money, mess with my family. Listen, you know about covenants. Therefore, I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb by which I cut a covenant with God and by the word of my testimony to speak it and remind you, in case you don't know, I know my covenant rights. So get out. I didn't speak it like this. I opened the door of my front house. I was yelling at two in the morning. Screaming. Then I said to the devil, if you know your mother gave birth to you, I dare you show up. Now. And the covenant anointing of my partner will deal with you. And the covenant blood of my partner will deal with you. And the covenant word of my partner will deal with you. I didn't close my eyes. I said, I dare you, devil, to appear. Satan, appear now. If you know your mother gave birth to you. Nothing appeared. I only heard one dog in a fireplace. I say, it's only bark you can bark, but you can bite. The dog went, woof, woof, woof. I say, that's for your owner. Take his sleep. Good night, dog and Satan and the owner of the dog. Good night. Bang my door, went to bed. I woke up. The storm was still. Sometimes we worry too much. A covenant-powered life is a different life. Sometimes speak to yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Get some oil. Put your hand on yourself. Look yourself in the mirror. Don't you know you're a covenant child of God? What is wrong with you? The same thing with sickness. Am I helping anybody? You're too quiet for glory house this morning. Let me conclude. I've concluded. Let me close. Then we come to the third part of it. Sometimes it's good to write your notes. This iPad business. God help us. <sighs> Why do we give what is first fruit? This refresher. Five minutes, I'm done. I know I took long. Uh, did I help anybody? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Am I helping you? Yeah. Sometimes just 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 talk to the devil. Devil, you know what? That's enough. That's enough. One of the boys was sneezing. I was sneezing. He started sneezing. I said, wait a minute. I said, uh, get cough, uh, get cold medications. And the devil said, is that all? Tell the cold to get out. Sometimes, see, no sickness comes without a sign. A sign. Oh, my cold has come again. Hmm. It's your cold. Custom made for you. <laughs> oh, my headache. I was sneezing this morning. Some of you saw me. But I'm preaching now. Have I sneezed since I started? Uh, I went there. I said, Father, 
cold is your servant. Me, I'm your servant. Choose who will serve you this morning. They said snow was, which day somebody told me snow was coming? Huh? This Tuesday. There, there will not be any snow. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, just, don't, don't say, hey, 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 man. Because you're already thinking of going to work to make money. But you won't tithe. You won't, until I see your first fruit now. We're going there. No, snow is a servant of God. And some of you wonder why in the world do we have winter. You roll your eyes. We have winter so that germs and viruses and all these things can die. God needs to clean up because we have too much mess. Some people sneeze, they release thousands of stuff flowing around. So God needs to clear the earth and then start again. In any case, we complain too much. Can you imagine 12 months of summer? Oh, the heat is too much. Pastor, tell God, the heat is too much. 12 months of spring. Oh, my God, all this pollen, all this pollen. Allergy, allergy, allergy. Okay, summer, oh, no, winter, uh, fall. Oh, my God, all these leaves, oh, and all these allergies. Oh, I just don't like it. Oh, um. Spring, oh my God, oh, I just like it, but oh my God, all this clarity and all these things I have to take. So God said, okay, a small summer, oh, the heat is too much. Fall, oh, I love the fall, but the leaves, okay, winter, oh, it's too cold. Okay, spring, God is so good, especially to Americans. In Africa, we have only one weather. It's either hot or it's rainy. It's raining, it's hot. It's cold, it's hot. Leaves, leaves. They go to Jamaica, warm weather. Yes. Yeah, man. They go to Caribbean, they go to Trinidad, warm weather. They go to Congo, they just got a new president that everybody said he wouldn't win. But praying people is the secret. He was the leader of the opposition. The French government said this man can't win. When he won, they say, check again, count the results, the votes. He, he wasn't pensive. They didn't know that there were Christian preachers powering him. Covenant-assisted presidential president. Amen. You see people succeeding. There's a power. Am I helping you? Huh? First fruit, what does it mean? First fruit, Proverbs 3. 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with the first fruit of thy substance. Honor him. First, honor the Lord with, with thy substance and the first fruits of all thine increase. Every first month of the year we bring a f one day's pay, one week's pay, two weeks' pay, what have you, whatever you decide and say, Father, this is my first fruit to honor you. Romans, what well, is it, Romans 11, if the first fruit be holy, the lump is holy. This is just to thank you for the prosperity I will enjoy this year. This is my first fruit from my job. This is my first fruit from my business. That is what we do. This week we sent out, is it not two checks now? Two checks. First fruit from our church to where God asked us to send it to. This week again, we'll send out again. Am I helping somebody? Sowing seed is expensive. It's painful. But the results. You secure, put it up, Romans 1. And the benefits are too big to ignore. I'm a, my wife was telling me, oh, honey, this is, this is, the first week we have. And I, I said, yes, should I? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? First fruit. You must power the altar that works for you. The altar that works. The altar that works for you. Can you imagine married and then you wake up and you just go uh, to another woman's house and say, oh, well, 
Mm -hmm. Romans 11, 16. You married to James. You go to John's house to sleep. You show up and say, honey, uh, you know I'm your uh, wife, but um, I went to sleep at uh, my girlfriend's house. In fact, I'll marry you during the day, come prepare your meal and everything, but from now, every night, I will sleep in my girlfriend's house. You must be a lesbian or you're out of your mind. No. Marriage commitments. Marriage commitments and you service the marriage. Hmm? Hmm. When anybody in this church comes to me and says, Pastor, I see someone to marry. What's my first response? No. Why? To push you. To, so you can say, Pastor, why did you say no? To push you to pray so you can check and cross-check and be sure. Because once you sign, you're in. You're out. You're out. But you, you, you're out. That's anybody who knows. Once you come to me, Pastor, I want to ask you. I'll say no. I say, Pastor, you hate me. No. Better check who. Check now before you go into covenant with a covenant destroying partner. After all, you're going to be the one in there. And the question I ask you is he a Christian? Yeah, he is. Does he pay tithe? Is he a first fruit giver? Does he honor the Lord? Father, thank you for strength. And here is my seed of appreciation so that the rest of the lump, the rest of the year can become blessed, fruitful, successful, anointed. Is he a tither? Does he give to God? If he doesn't give to his maker, he won't give to you. And a man is designed to earn more money than the wife so he can take care of the wife and take care of the children and have some respect. When a woman feeds you and she's not sanctified and she's not in glory house, one day you'll see your shirts flying out plus your winter jacket through the window in this weather. That's how women are wired. You push her, one day she will just tell you, who do you think you are? You are not ashamed that a woman is feeding you. Eat. Mango head. Eat. Coconut head. Keep eating. God doesn't like it because a woman was made for the man. The man was not made for the woman. A woman is a need meter. Everything, every need that is in my life, my wife was designed to meet those needs. I saw something on Facebook. They say a woman has so many hands and uh, she can cook. And I said, no, this is wrong. A woman doesn't have many hands. A woman has all hands as a need arises. She can be your nurse. She can be your doctor. She can be your encourager. She can be your prayer partner. She can be your intercessor. She can be your carer. She can scan people and tell you and you get mad because she's trying to pick your friends. Who does she think she is? She's trying to meet needs and you're blind to see that she's designed to meet every need and help you to succeed. Mm, I like that. Meet every need. Help you succeed. Mm, pastor, is, pastor is doing some uh, Holy Ghost rap these days. Hey, Amen. Why? That's her design. Thank God. There are many things my wife had told me I didn't like it, but it came to pass. 
So before you come close to me, I just bring you so she can scan you because the woman has a scanning machine, Xerox machine, every machine, X-ray machine. Uh, is it CT scan? Huh? Everything in them. She can cook. She can do TSA. She can do anything. Just bring. There's not one person she told me be careful about that she was wrong. And early in our marriage, I'd be like, this woman is not spiritual. Can't you see that this is a prayer warrior? It has been sent in answer to prayer to help the ministry. You say, this guy, honey, let's watch him. Oh, this woman has come again. In some, some decisions I would take, I would say, I won't tell my wife. Let me just do it secretly. I'll come home and she'll say, what is that envelope in your hand? I'll say, nothing. Nothing. Did you go shopping? No. Did you go to the mall? No. But you said you were at the mall. Yeah, sort of. After she went, goes to bed, I'll go and bring the things I bought from the mall. I left them in the car. <laughs> Why? I just don't like her. Seeing my stuff, new stuff. Because you went to the mall again. Ah, are those new shoes? Ah, not really. They've been in the house. It's just that you haven't seen them. How long? Oh, 24 hours. But they've been in the house. Well, is that a new suit? Oh, honey, you've seen this suit. It's white. Is it not white? She said, yeah. So how many white suits do you have? Just a few. She already scanned you. You were on 85 North. She knew the damage you did to Bank America at the mall. This she just keeps quiet. A wise woman will know. Gerard, did you drink? No, mom. Did you smoke? Never. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Okay, eat. Gerard, yes, mom. Eat. And you're eating. And you say, ah, that old man don't know nothing. When Gerald was trying to purchase the beer, the mother saw her. Women are seers. And Abraham, Millie, Sarah saw the way Abraham was looking at the housemaid. He said, honey, I think you like this girl. No, I rebuke it. Just take her. The way you're looking at this lady, this African lady, that's why Jewish people still hate Africans up to now. <laughs> They're trying to say, he said, the way you are looking at this, and he's still our father, Abraham, our father. Am I helping him? The scan, they say, Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham to save her neck. Self preservation. Now, I'm not saying you should hire your housemate for your husband now. I didn't say that. It's the Old Testament. Amen. First fruit releases uncommon blessings. Stand on your feet. As if you're going to stand on my feet. I gave you three messages in one. Did you learn anything? Huh? Did you learn anything? You did? Woman, you did? You learned something? You learned a lot or something. The way they're there, like passages are, I want to go sleep. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Wait a minute. The Lord just spoke to me and said he's about to lift somebody financially. Amen. No, before you say amen, find out what type of lifting. He said I should tell somebody that this day today is the last day you'll ever have money problems. Amen. Do you receive that? Amen. Now lift your hands and thank him for the word that came. Long word. I know it was a long preaching session. Thank him that he gave three messages in one so that one will, if not nothing, one will work. 
thank him right now. In Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Now lift your right hand and say, based on my covenant with Jesus, say it like a winner. Based on my with Jesus, I, declare I declare that no death, that no, death no, accident, no accident, no bloodshed, no, no loss no shall come into my life or into my family this year or for the rest of my life. Now make it your prayer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. amen. Lift your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, based on my covenant with Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus that favor will follow me all the days of my life. Make that declaration right now. Based on my covenant in the blood of Jesus, I decree and declare that favor will follow me all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now lift your right hand again. Say, Father. Say it louder. In the name of Jesus. Based on my covenant. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I decree that this week is my week of turnaround. This year is my year of pleasant surprises. Lift your voice now. I declare it. I declare it. I say it. I declare it. Oh yes, pleasant surprises all the days of my life throughout this year. In the name of Jesus, say amen to that. Say amen. Grab your neighbor's hand. I prophesy into your life by the power of the blood of Jesus and the covenant of the blood of Jesus that you will live, you will not die, you will excel, you will do well, you will prosper, you will flourish. There shall be no death, no loss, no decrease. Your star will shine. This is your year of pleasant surprises in every area of your life. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, come on. Let's press in. Let's press in. The anointing from the fast is still with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. Grab somebody else's hand. I don't like the way you're praying. Say neighbor. Lift your voice. Neighbor. Lift it higher. Neighbor. Uh -huh. I declare. I decree over you that throughout 2019, you will laugh for joy. You will not weep in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Prophesy. I decree that over those watching on Periscope, Facebook, around the world, this is your year of rejoicing. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. In Jesus' name we pray. Now take one finger and point at that your neighbor. Grab their hand, point it and say, In the name of Jesus, the covenant of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob will assist you, will power you this year. The covenant of the blood of Jesus will work for you, will defend you, will protect you, will prosper you will enlarge you, will lift you, will preserve you, will pr prosper you. This year, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, your life will be lifted. Your life will be assisted. Your life will be powered. Your life will be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, there will be deliverance in your life. There will be healing. There will be restoration. There will be joy. There will be breakthrough. There will be breaking forth. You will not lose. 
you will not die you will not expire you will bring forth with joy you will serve God with gladness just open up your mouth prophesy prophesy make it louder louder louder